This video is going to be big. It's going to take you through all the sorts of ways that extra blank space can show up in your Word document and how to remove it. Hopefully this guide covers exactly the sort of problem that you're having with your Word document. And hopefully I'm here offering you a solution that will help you out because that's what I like to do on this channel. Offer you the sorts of tools and solutions that will improve your uh, professional reports or the way you communicate with your teammates or, or making really complicated things in the workplace simple. That's what Engineers Upgrade is about. So I'm going to take you through in this video step by step how to resolve the different ways that extra white space can show up in your Word document. My name's Chris and feel free to follow along as I go through it. The first one I found and I've put it up on the screen here is where different, I'll, I'll turn this off for effect, just bear with me one second because uh, as you can see here, there's too much white space around these paragraphs in this first section of the document and there's too much white space around this heading. It's not great. So how do we resolve that? The first thing I'd recommend, the number one thing I'd recommend whenever you have a formatting problem in your Word document is to come up here and click on this little paragraph marks button. It's going to show you exactly where all the uh, formatting information is in your Word document and give you some hints about how to change these things. For example, the very first extra space that we've found in our document already is due to an extra line being inserted here. So all we have to do is remove that line by pressing delete and we've solved that white space problem. Now we come to the second paragraph and we take a look at that and we say, well, there's no extra line here, so what's wrong? Now, because we've got those marks on, we know there's no extra line. We know that pressing delete won't solve this problem. And as you can see, it just, oops, wrong section. If you click over here, press delete, it's just going to move the paragraph up. So what's going on there? Now, th when this happens to you, it's due to paragraph spacing. So this, the first most common way too much uh, white space appears in your document is by pressing the enter key and having new lines show up over and over. But the second most common way I've seen uh, extra white space come up in your document, well, I haven't seen it in your document, but I've seen it in my documents, uh, in, in my experience as a consultant and, and an engineer, whenever there's too much white space in my Word document, it's usually because someone's messed with the paragraph settings. So if you come up to the top and click on paragraph settings and then click on indents and spacing, Come down here to where it says spacing after and make sure it's consistent. It doesn't matter so much what the actual number is, just as long as it's consistent throughout your document. So in this case, I've set this document up to be six point before and after, and that's solved the spacing problem. I did a whole video about how to set up reports, which I'll leave in the description below. But let's look at the spacing around headings as well. So it's the same sort of problems again, and this is going to be a theme for this video, that Extra space is usually caused by too much spacing on your paragraph settings or too many new lines pressed in, press, someone's pressed enter too many times. I highly recommend against using enter or space to format your Word document. Use Word styles instead. And that video I mentioned earlier goes through how to set that up for a professional report. So again, with our heading here, we can uh, simply, we've identified that there's a new line. We can remove the new line and the spacing's fixed. If you feel that there should be more spacing or less spacing with the heading, you can select the heading and again, apply that paragraph spacing to it. Uh, for example, there's a lot of spacing before this heading, but I've set that up intentionally. So I'm going to cancel out of that. Now, the next most common thing I've found about when, when people say there's too much spacing in my Word document is that there's too much space between lines. Now, this can come about from having uh, too much space between the lines within a paragraph or it can come about when paragraphs are used as lines. So I'll turn off the paragraph marks and I'll show you what it looks like when there's too much line spacing used. Uh, so for example, if we change this, the, the default for Word is usually three here if you set to multiple. So you can see in this paragraph, there's far too much spacing. It, it looks like they're independent sentences. It looks a complete mess to be honest. So to resolve this yourself, if you're finding there's too much space between your lines, again, come up and turn on the paragraph marks button. And if you see that there's, uh, it's all one paragraph, that means that your line spacing is too much. So select somewhere in that text, come up again and click paragraph settings, and then select, uh, I like to set it to a multiple. There are a few different options here. I like to set it to a multiple of about 1.08 to 1.15, depending on, uh, if you're submitting this report to a journal or professional institution like that, they may have particular settings for line spacing. 
When I submit my reports as a consultant to my client, I like to use 1.08. Uh, it helps a little bit with the readability over one, but it doesn't vastly increase the amount of space by setting it up to say 1.5 as some people do. So I click OK to that and it will then adjust back to a, a reasonable amount of space. And if that's one issue where you're having too much space between the lines, pay attention to the line spacing setting. So another one I found and <laughs> Uh, particularly junior consultants can have a tendency to do this is to set the paragraph spacing to zero and then use new lines to create new lines. So th that can result in too much space between lines. So the first thing I'd recommend is to make sure the paragraph spacing is set consistently. So highlight all the problem text and come up and click uh, settings. Make sure that the paragraph spacing is consistent. So in this document I've set it six and six. Click OK. And still that now you can see it's obvious there that these are separate uh, paragraphs, even though they're only one line. And we can come up and join them together and that will resolve the issue of too much space between the lines. So I had a colleague who uh, didn't like the way Word uh, formatted text uh, flows over pages. So he'd go through paragraphs individually and he'd start at the top of the document and he'd set the paragraph spacing for that one and, and that would move the way the page was laid out and then you go somewhere else in the document and set another spacing, a line spacing and a paragraph spacing there and he'd, he'd go back and repeat because different things had changed and he spent days formatting this report with different spacings between the lines, different spacings between the paragraphs because he'd he, that was the way he believed uh, it should be done. That was the way he was trying to uh, punish Word for setting things out incorrectly. However, I prefer to work with Word, to use the tools that Word provides to set out pages properly. And those tools are primarily styles. There are a few others about keeping words together or hyphenation, which I'll show you in the next section in a second. So that Word, we work with Word to put uh, to format our reports consistently because when you give it to a client, the client's going to look through and if there are any problems with your report or the client or your boss or whichever stakeholder it is, if there are any formatting problems with your report, then how can they know that the content of the report is correct if you haven't paid any attention to the formatting? So that, that's something I was brought up believing and I still certainly believe that to this day that the formatting of a report is so important to get right we can use the tools in Word to get that formatting right so that when we deliver our report to someone else, it looks clean, it looks professional, and they can trust the work that we put into it. So another one I found that often comes up is the space between words, particularly when you're using justified text. Some Word doesn't have a very good justification engine and an engine for determining how much space to put between words when you set it to justified. So I've got here a justified paragraph with a couple of long words. I just did a Google search for long words and, and this Welsh village, this Welsh train station popped up as a, an example of a very long word. So you can see when it's justified or even when it's left aligned in this case that there's far too much space between the words here. And that's because Microsoft Word uh, doesn't understand inherently, or it's not set to by default, hyphenate these words uh, like you would see in a newspaper or a book to help cope with that column width to, to position those words there. So if you found this, and this might come up in a table or it might come up somewhere in your report, I'd recommend selecting the paragraph that's the problem, coming up to the layout button and selecting hyphenation. Hyphenation and then set to automatic. Now Word will pick the best places to put that in and you can see it's changed some of the other paragraphs as well. Word will pick the best place to put that in. In English, it's not too bad, but this being a Welsh word, it, I don't think it's picked the right area. If there are any Welsh people in the audience, please leave a comment down below and let me know if Word's correctly hyphenated this. I would be interested. But uh, Word having adjusted itself for the hyphenation now, it looks a bit nicer. Uh, alternatively, I can show you what it looks like if it's left aligned. Sorry, there was an ambulance parked right outside my apartment. But I'll show you what it looks like left aligned. So if you click on the align left, then it's still, it doesn't change much in this case because Word is already set to use that hyphenation. So setting hyphenation is probably one of the easier ways to address the issue of too many, too much space between words. Alternatively, yeah, I, and this is something I've done in the past, is to rewrite the sentence. Uh, sometimes if you're using too many long words within a sentence, perhaps it's not appropriate. So the other way that I've liked to resolve this too much space between words issue in the past is simply to change the sentence. I, I found that 
Sometimes when you're writing a report, and this is why it can be important for consultants to write and format their own reports and engineers as well, is to consider the uh, formatting, the appearance and how that relates to the text. Because as someone writing the report, what's the point in writing a report that's no one's going to read simply because the formatting wasn't right? So I like to do my own formatting and my own writing at the same time. I like to set up or have set up for me, usually it's a corporate communications that will set it up, a report that suits our corporate style and our, our corporate image, and then type within that report uh, so that within that style, so that my, uh, the formatting and the context of the report, the content with inside it, fit. Now, in this case, uh, if I saw that there were too, mu too much space between words, I could override the formatting and use left aligned. I could insert hyphenation, uh, which is another option. Or I can rewrite the sentence to use shorter words. And sometimes that supports readability. The format, breaking the formatting like that could be a hint that I'm not writing the correct thing. So, I find it just so important to pay attention to formatting as you're writing because both the, the words that you're choosing to put in the sentence and the format that they're displayed in are going to affect how someone's going to read your report. And why write a report if no one's going to read it? That, so that, that's my job as a consultant, to write reports that people are going to read. So they're the best ways that I consider to address the space between words. Uh, there is another problem I've seen where, sorry, it's sort of hinting here at what's coming next in the video, but there is another problem I've seen where people like to use a double space after a full stop. And this is, you, I believe this is left over from typewriter times. And I've seen a few government agencies that insist on double, full, double spaces after a full stop. But if you're looking at getting rid of that, or if, you, if you're not sure about when this shows up, an easy way to check is to turn back on that paragraph marks. And the two dots here will indicate that there's two spaces, one, one dot for each space. And if you're looking to remove this from your whole document, simply come up to replace, make sure that your find what is double space and it won't really show up, it won't be very clear on your screen, but just double space in there and replace with the single space. Now, be careful that someone hasn't used spaces to format in your report. I often find people use the enter key or the space bar key to format in a report in other ways. And I highly recommend against that because it stops you from doing things like this. And it's not a very consistent way. Word will change the number of millimeters or the fraction of millimeters it assigns to a space depending on the flow of the document. So uh, I recommend coming through and, and finding the double space, replace with a single space and then hit replace all. And that will go through the document and replace all of the, all of the spaces with single spaces, much better looking. Word doesn't keep consistent. All, all the settings I've gone through here in terms of spaces, spacing, uh, the width of certain things, the space between words is all dynamic. The space between lines, the space between paragraphs, we're giving Word some hints about what it should display. So that when Word comes to put those things on a page, to lay that out on the page, Word decides the best ways to do that so that it looks the best for when it's printed. And sometimes those things aren't the best, which is why when my colleague was going through and, and setting out all those line spaces, when it was printed, it looked completely different and, it, and his whole effort was a bit wasted by it. So just bear in mind that Word is making a lot of decisions under the hood for you that you might not be accustomed to, that the sorts of settings you're putting in are telling Word hints, suggestions about what you want to happen. But ultimately the, the decision is up to Word. And if that's not acceptable to you, then there are other document formatting styles that, that you can adjust these things, and particularly in academia. If you're not happy, uh, academics will often tell you a lot of problems with Microsoft Word. Uh, and um, book authors as well will often tell you problems with Microsoft Word that can be overcome by using different tools. But anyway, we're here to solve problems with Microsoft Word. So the next one being, what about when there's too much white space around your table? And we're going to find it's the same themes here where there's a new line inserted or there's too much paragraph spacing. So for example, uh, when I did the video on how to put tables together, and I'll, I'll put a card up for, for this video if you're interested, where I did the video on, on what, when to use tables in a report, what styles or, or how to enhance your report with tables, the Google style guide that I, the, the best style guide I found was from Google. And they recommended having an introductory sentence to your table that explains to the reader what wants coming up in this table. And for example, in, in this example here I've got on the screen, there's too much space between that introductory sentence and the table. Now, we can see from having the paragraph marks on that that extra space is not due to a superfluous line. So we click on our paragraph 
a click on our line, click on the little paragraph settings button and we see that there's far too much space afterwards. So we adjust that back down to a more reasonable number, the consistent number with the document, six and six, click OK, and that resolved that issue. Now we can see uh, again that within a table when there's too much white space it could be the same problem. So you can adjust the white space within a cell using the same thing by clicking on the paragraph settings for the contents of that table, clicking on the little paragraph settings button and fixing the spacing. Another way is uh, say you weren't happy with the amount of white space above or below this, this text. I've chosen this alignment particularly for this type of table where I've got uh, something important, the category, then a description and then a number. I've chosen to left align, uh, to center left align this. But it may be more appropriate for your table to come over to layout and to change the alignment here. I highly recommend for, uh, there are lots of different uses of tables in a report. I don't recommend using too many columns, say if you had more than four or five columns then, or, or big rows that span pages that you might be better off splitting up the table and deciding a different way to show the information, perhaps a graph or chart. Uh, and if you're interested in how to do that, I, I've, uh, I had that card up previously and I'll leave a link in the description below about when to use tables. But uh, the different ways of formatting tables can be important. So e even the column width, can be adjusted to change the amount of white space that appears there. I'll turn off the paragraph marks so you can see that. The, the white space over here can be adjusted by changing the width of the column. And for something where there's a number sitting there by itself, if we want to downplay the number, we can make that column a lot smaller. Or if the number should feature a lot more prominently, we can make that column bigger and say, okay, well, now you can see quantity is the focus of this table and description and, and rail are secondary pieces of information. This was part of a report I submitted to a, a major rail operator in, in a particular city. So uh, moving on to the next piece of space then is the, the line, the paragraph following the table. In, the, in this case, there's too much space because there's a new line there, so I delete that. But now that text is a bit close to the table and is that appropriate? I've seen in some reports, particularly from say big four consultants, uh, big four accounting consultants, that they'll have the table and then that'll be the end of the page and the table will be laid out particularly on the page. Uh, sometimes a lot of government reports that are made public uh, rely on that particular typesetting that may be popular in magazines or newspapers. So if, if you want more space between here, this is an opportunity to come up and use that same paragraph settings and then set more spacing in the before so that your next sentence after the table has that extra little bit of space to set it out apart from the table that it's not the same thing. So those are some of the common ways that I found white space to cause problems in a Word document. White space can, be, can make your document appear um, unprofessional, particularly when you've used the enter key for spacing instead of using paragraph settings. Uh, it can appear very old fashioned if you're using that enter key for spacing when you should be using styles. And it can seem, it can feel to a client if, if you happen to make a mistake when because you've used such a manual process and you're fighting Microsoft Word in the way you're, you're putting this document together, if you've made a mistake, but you know, everyone makes mistakes and your client or your executive or your boss or whoever else picks up the mistake, they're going to really question the quality of the content that you put inside the report. So I made another video about how to get started with professional reports. So I'll leave a link to the description. I'll put a card up here about how to get started with professional reports. Check out that video and you can, it, it walks you through setting up a template so that you'll hopefully avoid some of these mistakes in the future by setting up that template and sticking to that template as you go. But if you're interested in more ways that Engineers Upgrade can help you, hit the like button to really get suggestions from YouTube about this sort of thing, about improving your professional uh, work, your professional communications and the way you write reports. Or if you're interested in particular in how I'm helping you, what tools I can offer, hit the subscribe button and YouTube will suggest more of my videos. Look out for those and, and make sure you watch them all the way through. Or alternatively, as new videos come out, uh, take a look at those because I like to share on this channel the sorts of tools and tips and tricks that will help you develop as a professional now, whether that be through communicate, better communications, better written communications, particularly in this time where it's a struggle to meet in person, I really believe in the value of written communications and 
formatting and the way we lay out those communications is just so important. But I've also shared some of the methods and techniques for generating new ideas and sharing those new ideas with different people, involving different groups in decision making, things that can really work remotely as well. So please hit subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.